Okay. Uh, so let's just begin. Ah. So welcome to our second episode uh, for our live wire live stream. The title for today is Business Ideas and Business Opportunities. Uh, but since this is actually a different setup, previously the previous setup was uh, in the office. Um, uh, now, because of this whole, um, ha, apa nama ni? Third wave fine, eh? ada banyak issues. So now I'm doing it from home. Hopefully the network quality uh, maintains lah. Ha. Uh, so checking with the viewers, who are, however, I don't know how many people or a few people yang ada, checking with the video quality, audio quality, whether you can read the slides very well or not. Uh, then uh, just checking the chat functionality terus. Uh, just uh, type arah the chat lah. How well uh, can you see the video, the audio uh, and your internet connection? Okay, so just waiting for lah, a few responses, making sure that uh, the quality is okay. Um, giving it lah, a few seconds, maybe a mi- up to a minute lah, huh? because there's a bit of delay from the broadcast. Hello, Mizi. Everything okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. I think uh, even with the few responses, I took, um, I'll just uh, um, assume that everything is fine. Audio is fine. Uh, no issues. Okay. So we can just continue, lah. Huh? So again, uh, just sh- um. We have the contents, our introduction to the series and streamer. Mata yang first time yang ato uh, melihat. Um, um, I should speak in English as well. Uh, so I'll try to maintain. Di rumah tu rasa macam tadi cakap dalam Melayu ni ya. Uh, Mas Dovis bisa sikit senangkan fokus in English ya. Uh, so uh, introduction to the series and streamer. Uh, and again, the topic for the business ideas and opportunities. Uh, in the ideas part, I will look into the ways uh, you can find business ideas. Uh, among which uh, follows on vision purpose using design thinking and look at market needs and then we'll look into business opportunities okay uh, we'll look into b2c b2b and b2g which is basically business to consumers or customers uh, business to business and then business to government uh, that's in general where most business opportunities are categorized and finally we can have a Q&A and just chatting and unfortunately there's a slight delay in the live chat okay uh moving on okay so introduction so again uh, introducing the series of entrepreneurship topics and the snippets will be used for video content for online referral so you can actually check uh, the contents in fact you can see the previous episode if you missed it uh, and you can see the the basic introduction to entrepreneurship and then uh, the topic shared will be summary of workshop content so this is also to promote our workshop our live wire workshops and we can discuss and have a few q and between main topics i'll try to make it as interactive as possible unfortunately it's, it's not like zoom where you can uh, voice out uh, uh, your questions but you can ask in the q and a uh, so when you have any questions just ask in the chat uh, and i'll double check again in the chat if anyone has any questions and i will try to answer them as soon as i can as soon as i see the questions and uh, uh, for your info you can also share the live link uh, so again this is live uh, so you can share the live link to anyone else you think that uh, might find this useful okay uh, so checking saja the chat if any uh, if anyone have any questions so far bermula pelong ya so Okay, so again, reviewing the plan content. Uh, so previously, we've done introduction to entrepreneurship. Uh, and today, we'll be looking into business ideas and opportunities. Uh, so very briefly again. And then uh, next one in March, I will be looking at legal considerations in doing business in Brunei. That might be a lengthy one, maybe one hour and um, one hour plus. Uh, so some of these topics might be 30 minutes, might be uh, one hour. Uh, that one might take a long while and that might actually have a lot of question uh, uh, question answers discussions uh, so we'll see in in that time but for today we'll look into business ideas and opportunities 
So, uh, introduction to myself. My full name is Muhammad Fadilah Tudun bin Haji Hassan, alias Muhammad Hasbullah Bobby. Everyone uh, calls me Bobby. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an endurance athlete. Uh, I'm an enthusiast of business, IT, and sciences. Uh, and I'm also an educator. I like to teach people. I like to share with people what I know, what I've learned. Okay, hopefully my voice is still clear. Okay. <laughs> Bismillah, yes. <sighs> We can only plan uh, God determines Melayunya uh, Kata ni rancang um, Tuhan menentukan uh, So <laughs> Okay Hopefully Just checking Voice quality Video Slide Okay um, And chat Seems to be working Okay So hopefully Itulah uh, The previous uh, uh, On air tadi tu Still recorded um, And maybe Uh, our technical team can join the two videos together hopefully if not uh, start dari sini let's say that i don't want to uh, restart all over again and then waste everyone's time so let's look at the business idea so uh, looking at vision <coughs> purpose market needs uh, and then design thinking and problem solving so vision is usually for those entrepreneurs who have a vision for the world that they see things that uh, they want in life in the world Uh, that they want to become a reality. So you can see a lot of uh, visionary uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, easily people will name Steve Jobs. Uh, but I would say living ones include Elon Musk. Um, so they they see the world uh, uh, they, they see the world that has a potential to become something and they try to make it happen. Uh, so we actually have a workshop on this uh, to create Uh, a business idea based on your visions. Uh, so once you have a vision of what you want to see in the world, then you want to create a mission. So what are the things that you need to do in order to achieve those mission? And then uh, you can break down all the mission into uh, different uh, activities or objectives that you can do in order to achieve it. Now I like to use the examples that uh, um, I have, which is actually my own business. Uh, so in my case, uh, my swimming school, I have a few other businesses, but I like to share about my swimming school. So my vision is everyone can swim. Uh, originally it was uh, um, to prevent drowning, but it, it feels like it's focusing on the negative. Uh, so I believe that if everyone knows how to swim, then we can have less drowning. Uh, so in order to see the vision that of everyone can swim, not just everyone in Brunei, uh, everyone. So that means everyone in the world. And it's like Air Asia. Uh, so everyone can fly but in this case everyone can swim uh, so the mission is to pr provide the swimming education uh, that uh, people need in order that uh, in order for them to be able to swim uh, so the objectives is to inform the public to educate them and train them uh, so the activities involved are providing swimming information uh, swimming talks and swimming classes i've done a few swimming talks but that really gets a lot of people Uh, interested uh, but when i just promote the swimming classes it seems to be to be working so again this is uh, using vision uh, in a way to uh, to create business ideas huh? and this uh, the business ideas are basically to uh, to make your dream your vision a reality so uh, using your vision to create businesses to, uh, to make it a reality to see uh, to realize your vision Now, the other way of uh, looking into business ideas is looking at your passion and skills and how you can make money out of them. Uh, so even in, in this case, uh, I have my own examples. Uh, so in uh, general, when I was looking into starting a business, I was looking at uh, my passion and skills. So I, I look, uh, I... Um, I was interested in ICT and science and then uh, I was also interested in making money uh, and then I was also interested in food, health and fitnesses and I love to teach even though I didn't, didn't end up becoming a chemistry teacher, I still love uh, teaching uh, and I like sharing what I've learned. And I like to do endurance sports. Uh, so it's, these are mostly introverted uh, solo sports uh, where I usually uh, spend time on my own, uh, which is usually swimming, cycling, running, and hiking. But nowadays, a lot of people are into these as well. So there uh, are now communities of people doing this. So it's not no longer truly an introverted sport. Uh, so looking at the passion and skills, so I can uh, actually decide what uh, what type of business that I would be interested in. So passion and skills are very important because passion helps you uh, maintain that uh, that business uh, business idea, the business operations, and the skills ensure that you have a high quality product or service. Uh, so. 
in my case my businesses uh, my first uh, business was food stalls because i loved food uh, so i actually was uh, flipping burgers like 2005 Uh, and then at some point I ventured into internet cafe I found, found that someone was selling out, uh, selling off the internet cafe uh, so I bought it over but unfortunately it was a dying business it was a dying industry I, I was lacking in market research at that point uh, so at some point I decided to convert it into a computer school uh, and again internet cafe and computer school is very close uh, they're both ICT related but now computer schools were more into uh, sharing what I know sharing what I've learned uh, about uh, ICT And then uh, f- uh, at some point, I became a business consultant and training because people were asking me how uh, to do what I uh, did, uh, how to do marketing, how to do planning. Uh, so it's either I do the planning for them or I teach them how to do business planning. In fact, one of the first uh, workshops I did for LiveWire before I worked for LiveWire was to do a short workshop on how to write up a business plan. Uh, and in 2010, I had the opportunity to work with LiveWire. Uh, so then uh i was able uh, i got the job now and now since 2010 i've been working with labor as a business counselor uh, but at some point when i was a business counselor i didn't focus on my health anymore then i restarted back so i worked in labor for 2010 i gained weight under 10 and then i went back into my health and fitness craze uh, so i went swimming cycling running uh, and At that point, I think 2014, I was short of cash. Uh, so I was like looking at how can I well work with LiveWire at the same time still do business. So the easiest one for me was doing a swimming school because uh, I was very good at swimming. Uh, and I could interestingly teach people swimming relatively fast. Apparently, I have a system that, that is uh, very good that can teach people in a short amount of time. Uh, if you're interested, you can check Effortless Swim either IG or Facebook or the website affiliateswim.com. Uh, so again, sharing on purpose, uh, uh, you look at your passion and skills and what you can uh, do, what, what you can do to make money out of it. Uh, so this is the easiest one. Uh, there's no point of doing a business uh, that you're not interested in, that you're not passionate about, uh, and uh, you can't really do a business that you're, you don't have any skills. Uh, I think the most important part is the passion part. So I would say it's your purpose or your life purpose. Once you can match all these together, uh, where you can match your passion and your skills, and then make money out of it. So you're actually uh, doing what you love and then making money at the same time. So that would be the perfect life for me, anyway. Uh, so you can also look into that. And in our uh, business ideas, uh, so bright ideas and the business plan series, uh, I also uh, share about this. Uh, but if you want, you can uh, do it as a homework later, or maybe while you're Uh, listening, you can also write down uh, what, what are your passion and skills and how you can convert those passion and skills into business ideas. Or if you have a business idea or you are running a business right now, you can check, double check uh, whether it is the right business for you. Uh, this can also apply to uh, employment as well. Uh, check if you if you love what you're doing, if you love your job, if you're very good at your job, uh, or if you're uh, not just job but your business. If you love your business or if you're very good at your business, then carry on. If not, maybe you, you have to either find the passion, or find the skill, or maybe let it go. Now that's probably the most difficult decision to make. And then a master hierarchy of needs. I usually share this in my business plan series. Uh, where you can look into what are people's needs. So again, this is about business ideas. So you can look into what people need in order uh, for them to live, to survive, to thrive. Uh, so uh, examples here are, uh, uh, if you look at the mass hierarchy of needs, the most basic one will start from the bottom. Uh, food and beverage uh, is required for physio- physiological needs. So Uh, it's um, you know you need it to survive. But nowadays with COVID, the need for medicine is more emphasized now. Without medicine, without vaccines, without the treatments, we cannot survive. Uh, so it's not just for and beverages anymore. It's now medicine. And then uh, the second from the bottom is security and safety. Uh, so people need homes uh, where they can feel safe, uh, and they might want to add security, maybe security system, CCTV, uh, maybe. Uh, fences around the, the house uh, to feel more secure and then uh, our need for uh, society our need for social needs 
so we usually fulfill this with gatherings, uh, but with COVID, the need for communications has increased. In fact, this is why Zoom, uh, the Zoom app has uh, has increased, uh, and also why live streaming has uh, increased as well. Uh, and that's what, probably why we're looking into this as well, uh, live streaming, because there have been uh, requests uh, for a live way to have content online so that the people can refer to so again social needs and then uh, self-esteem people's need to feel uh, and look good uh, so it's usually from hobbies usually i uh, stereotype men are into cars uh, and sports uh, or gyms and then while well, women are into looks uh, into cosmetics into fashion uh, but then, of course, there are people with money that they like to show off with luxury goods. Uh, and uh, finally, we have self-actualization. This is a, a very uh, long word, but it actually means to actualize or to fulfill your potential. Uh, so this is basically when you uh, when you are rich already or when you're successful already or you uh, have everything that you need, then what will you do? So people need to travel. People need to uh, give to charity. Once they have money, then you know that's what they, they'll do. Uh, so people will have that need as well. Uh, so uh, those are the main ones. Okay, uh, and then finally we have the design thinking. Again, this is about finding uh, business ideas. Huh? Uh, so one of the things that we one of the things that we teach in LiveWire is the design thinking process. Uh, uh, there's several um, versions of this, but this is the general one that we teach. Uh, so uh, looking at people's issues, problems, and then finding the solutions to it. Uh, so these are five step process to empathize, finding the, the problems, define, defining the problem, then ideate, finding the solutions, prototype, creating or building the solution, and then testing it out and see if it works. Uh, so in my example, um, again, I like to use my uh, my swimming school example. So empathize. empathize. So the problem was um, drowning issues where people don't know how to swim. Th then define uh, why is the problem there. So fear of water, uh, lack of swimming education, especially in Brunei, we don't have a swimming education. Uh, only as, a C in, as, as, as an ECA. While in other countries, I think in Australia and UK, it's actually part of the curriculum. Uh, so that's the problems and then ideate the solutions what can i do to find the solutions to these problems so uh, that's where uh, came up with the ideas of swimming talks uh, uh, training resources or uh, providing training in itself and then prototype is actually doing it or at least doing it in a sm small scale so when i started off my swimming school i actually just asked a group of friends uh, who wanted to learn how to swim then you know some people you know were, were interested and then while i was doing my classes i found out what people needed what were the problems that people had uh, then i learned to be able to systemize uh, my training so now if you look at the effortless swim uh, there's four levels so first level is just to being able to swim uh, swim not long distance but just being able to swim just crossing over uh, the weight or the length of the pool the uh, second one uh, to be able to do a freestyle swim uh, and then the third one is competitive swimming so different people have different needs so these are the, for those people who want to compete uh, to try to do a triathlon and then finally uh, open water so training people to survive actually not just survive to being able to co be comfortable in open water being in the ocean or in the rivers okay uh, so again this is about finding business ideas huh? so uh, business ideas was look at your vision your purpose or your passion uh, and then uh, we have the market needs and finally we have the design thinking so uh, you can actually find out more or l learn how to find more business ideas by joining live programs uh, so in bright ideas is a two-day program the first day we're already talking about finding business ideas half the day is all about creativity and finding business ideas in the business plan series it's more in between ideation to planning uh, so the first uh, half is is about finding business ideas and that first half first quarter and then the rest is about how to plan to create that business and of course we have our master classes in finding business ideas so this ideation by improvisation ideation using lean canvas design thinking as you as i mentioned the five step process and then there's also the impact measurement and management where we look into the vision and mission and then creating objectives or tasks or activities to um, well to realize your uh, your vision huh? uh, but that's usually either through business or through nonprofit uh, activity 
Okay, so that's uh, basically uh, so far on the ideation. After this, we'll be looking into business opportunities, and I'll be checking back with the chat if anyone have any questions on uh, on finding business ideas or uncertainties. You can just ask. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> okay, just checking chat. Okay. Um, okay, so far no questions. Thank you. Okay, so uh, final part. Uh, now we'll be looking at business opportunities. This is um, uh, short and simple. Uh, so business opportunities is related to your business ideas. So if your business ideas work and there are business opportunities that uh, link to those business ideas, then you uh, potentially become very successful. So. Uh, the business opportunities comes in three flavors, uh, it comes in three categories. The business to consumer, the, to the individuals, or business to business, to organizations, uh, to businesses, to corporations from small to big, and then the business to government, uh, so to the government agencies, the ministries, and so on. Uh, so first one is the business to consumer. Uh, so we've technically covered this is what are people's needs. So we can again look into the Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, and then uh, looking into customers' problems. What, uh, what are the people's complaints? Uh, you can look into uh, like those IGs or FBs where people complain. There's usually a business opportunity there where people complain. There's a, 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 a an opportunity uh, in there's a chinese saying that says uh, in every crisis there is an opportunity roughly translated in malay it's di mana ada kesempitan di situ ada kesempatan uh, so uh, look at what are the people's problems and then you can find a solution uh, a good example right now is where we have uh, problems with uh, covid and right now the main issue is the uh, the covid detection with the art kit so there's a huge uh, demand right now uh, for for art kit. So if you can solve that problem uh, quickly, then you can get a lot of money. So there's a lot of people uh, providing <laughs> uh, art kits, uh, but usually pre pre order lah. Huh? Uh, so that's looking at uh, customers' problems, and then of course there's market trends. Of course the trend right now is related to COVID, uh, but even before COVID, uh, before the third wave, uh, that there's uh, a lot of uh, opportunities in in food and beverages uh, so what are the trends are going into now um interestingly i love finally i love our food and beverage uh, industry has gone online because of the first wave of covid uh, there's a lot of competitors doing online business from ig even before that it, it was already there but because of the lockdowns or the partial lockdowns uh, then we weren't able to just easily go out uh, so we had to go online uh, so even the shopping uh, uh, experience has changed as well i think some even waho i think in i think in Kula, i saw shopee shopping full shopee full uh, so they're providing uh, online services so we can actually now just finally buy stuff online when uh, in other countries like uk us uh, it's been around for the last 10 20 years and now in brunei uh, because of covid it has come to fruition so that's looking at the business to consumer. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I just love to share. Uh, so the advantages obviously is a huge market. It's people, it's everyone. You know, uh, you want to sell to everyone. But the truth is you won't be able to sell to everyone. Usually it's going to be selling to a niche market. Uh, so not everyone will like a certain brand or product or service. Uh, the, uh, a certain amount of people, a, a certain group will. Uh, so the best way is to target the individuals. So what uh, are the people's uh, again, needs? There are specific needs for specific people. So you can target those. The disadvantages is you have two options when you're trying to market yourself. Uh, so the most common trap that people will go for is low price. But that you'll have to uh, counter with high volume. A good example of this is nasi katok. Uh, so obviously it's in the food and beverages it's a, a huge need if you don't have food you'll die uh, but there's a lot of competition huh? uh, so uh, most people try to counter that with low price but in order to profit you'll have to go high volume the other route is to do, go high price and low volume if your supply is limited you can easily increase the price if you're seen as even if you're perceived as limited you can go high price uh, but of course there's a balance that you have to go through. Huh? Uh, 
Uh, so you have to find that right price. Uh, pe- people who learn economics will understand about price elasticity. So when you change the price, will the demand change? Uh, so you have to look into that. <clears throat> And then, of course, this is the consumer, the customer. Uh, market trends uh, n- tends to change. Yeah. Uh, so w- one moment people are into this, another moment people are into another thing. Uh, I remember before the third wave, I think people were into Froyo. I think um, that that's also a matter of timing. Pre- previously, I remember there was al- already a frozen yogurt place, but it didn't do very well. But after the first wave of COVID, and we were able to go um, out, then I think Froyo was an, an in thing. Um, and now I can see after the third wave, I see food trucks. Uh, so if anyone runs around eco corridor, so food trucks are popping up as well. Uh, so it, it uh, tends to change. Uh, I think it's a bit risky when it changes too much. Uh, a good example will be uh, my previous experience was internet cafe. So uh, people were into it, I would say in the late 90s, uh, but the early 2000, it was dying out because the technology change. So you have to be wary of that. Once the technology changes, you probably have to change your direction as well. And of course, as I already mentioned, one of the disadvantages to business to consumer business opportunities is high competition. Uh, so if there's a need, there there will be a, be a supply. So once that supply uh, well goes up, then you'll be less profitable. Uh, something that you can see during COVID is uh, actually be- before people were looking for sanitizers, um, wet wipes, uh, alcohol wipes, uh, and people couldn't find it. Uh, and then at some point after I think the first or second wave, you'll see everyone is already selling it. So uh, not just the uh, the the pharmaceutical uh, shops like Guardian, uh, but even the convenience stores or even electrical stores, they're selling the sanitizers. Uh, so uh, high competition is eventual in the business to consumer uh, opportunities. Now let's look into uh, business to business. Uh, again, I'll be checking in chat if anyone has any questions. Okay, let me double check in the chat. Okay, so no questions. So again, if anyone has any questions, I will try to, to answer them as soon as I can. Huh? <clears throat> okay, so business to business. Uh, so these are businesses with businesses or organizations. Uh, so companies such as banks, oil and gas industry, uh, like Shell, for example, and then uh, retail shops and any companies with uh, CSR or corporate social responsibilities. And of course, you can also try to provide services to the SMEs or the micro SMEs. So among the business opportunities that you have, again, look at the, the needs of these businesses or organizations. So uh, I try to look into it in terms of from its beginnings uh, to its expansion. So as a business starts, then they'll need a consultant a consultation. So, uh, so a few people still ask me for advice. Uh, uh, for starting and running their business. Uh, usually I just refer to any live wire workshops now, uh, but previously I would charge people to write up a business plan. So you can also become a business plan developer. Uh, so that's another opportunity. If you join our business plan series workshop, you learn how I create a business plan. So potentially uh, you can also create business plans for other people. And then uh, there's of course supplies and stationery. Uh, most brick and mortar businesses do require uh, supplies, uh, simple pens, paper, uh, even letterheads. And then market research. This is um, something that most Bru- uh, most Brunei business don't do a lot. There's not a lot of market research done in Brunei. Uh, I think I've seen, I think Grominda, uh, they've uh, provided market research. Uh, so most market research is done by government. It's very rare in Brunei for a private company to do market research. But in other countries, market research is necessary uh, in order to un- identify the market trends. Uh, I think some of the uh, positions that I've seen in businesses is the business development officer. To me, I think that's the, the R&D or the research and development of the company. Uh, so if people have, um, uh, if they're big enough, they usually have those people. But for small time business, they, uh, they probably need someone else to do the market research for them. And not much different from a business plan developer as well. It's basically doing market research. And then once a company wants to launch or wants to expand, uh, then there's uh, opportunities for event management. So some businesses may be able to do it themselves, but uh, most big businesses will probably want to outsource it. A good example is Shell. So they don't actually have an uh, internal events marketing 
department uh, but uh, they outsource it i think uh, two or three years ago they opened it up to an i usahawan uh, business opportunity and then there's printing services i know we're living in a digitalized world but printing is still necessary uh, even if you look at big op- uh, big events like upcoming is national day uh, and half of the uh, july hm's birthday Uh, so printing is still necessary yeah? uh, so th- those are still opportunities then training and accreditation depending on your business some training and certification is required uh, usually in oil and gas industry there's the iosh and nibosh training uh, so th- 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 there's money in there then financial services either uh, well banks th- that'll be a more difficult um, business opportunity to go into uh, but you could look into financial consultation uh, or bookkeeper or financial accountant again some of these jobs can be internal but they can they can be outsourced as well especially for small businesses uh, they might want to look into outsourcing it because they usually don't have the skills themselves and if they want to expand uh, or apply for a loan they'll want to look uh, for a uh, uh, a consultant to create the financial reports for them so that they can have that loan and then uh, finally expansion lah huh? so uh, based on the business plan developer the market research uh, some uh, ideas of expansion so they might expand their buildings they might expand uh, their resources and so on so th- there's a lot of business opportunities there Okay. Oh, so, uh, so oh, that's interesting. So, looking at business opportunities, people are looking for PC items. Yes, uh, that's a good one. Uh, that's more into back to the consumers. Uh, so, because of COVID, there's a lot of uh, re- uh, need or necessity uh, necessary requirements for online learning. Uh, so, uh, in general, uh, phone should be enough, but Most of the things that uh, schools teach um, maybe require like Excel or uh, some other project. So they'll probably need a computer system. And then there's also the the online conference um, requirement. So Zoom and MS Teams and so on. Nowadays, they actually require a lot of um, uh, spec, lah, high spec lah, uh, because even for all the computers even if they're high end they might be not be able to handle zoom um I, i noticed a few i think the person is in this uh chat uh they were com- com- complaining they have an i7 but it's an older generation but it's not compatible with the with zoom's uh virtual background Okay, uh, so oh yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> iklan kan diri saya. So you can promote yourself. So if you're looking for PC items, uh, you can follow sana ada Tech and Things on IG. Although probably uh, post uh, uh, this live stream will probably edit that out, uh, but it's still be on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so again, don't uh, you are welcome to share uh, about yourself and your business in the chat as well. Okay, so that was business to business. Uh, oh, uh, looking at the examples. Uh, we haven't gone to the examples yet. So, eh, mana? Okay. <gasps> Don't crash. Okay. So, just sharing here, uh, since we're talking about business to business, tender opportunities. Uh, so, you can look into tender. So, tender can be either government or uh, business to business. And a lot of uh, businesses actually publish tenders. Uh, uh, that means business opportunities that they want other people to do for them. So uh, it can be a small business or it can be a big business. You can either see this from the newspapers or even online. You just look for uh, Brunei tenders. I think there's one website that's trying to uh, consolidate all the tenders in Brunei, whether it's government or private. But here I'm just sharing uh, in terms of BSP or Brunei Shell Petroleum, they actually have uh, tender opportunities available. Uh, so this one you can just google uh, bsp tender opportunities or you can see from the link here it's bsp.com.bn uh, slash something something business opportunities in general you should be able to find uh, this uh, this page yeah? and this of course changes uh, and this one you can see uh, i just uh, pulled this out a few days ago uh, just to be updated and there's opportunities for canteen services uh, it telecommunications office materials and equipments uh, so There are several business opportunities from uh, small uh, to high to basic to highly specialized. Uh, so even simple businesses might be able to get uh, business opportunities. A lot of people don't know this, so, so that's why uh, there's not a lot of people who ap- apply for this. So in general, there's not a lot of competition uh, applying for this. Uh, BSP would love for more people to apply for these, and this is also another 
uh, goal for LiveWire is to help people to get contracts, whether it's with BSP or other businesses. So again, you can look this up and of course, don't forget to check out the checklist and guidelines, how you can be eligible. In general, small businesses can get uh, get business opportunities, uh, but I think they usually look into Sindran Bahats. Uh, so you might want to register your business as Sindran Bahat or you want to upgrade your business to Sindran Bahat uh, when you want to apply for a business opportunities with Shell. Okay, uh, so those are tender opportunities, and then of course, uh, disadvantages and disadvantages. Uh, in general, most corporates are good good paymasters. They usually have a policy, whether it's a thirty day policy or a ninety day policy, whether that's one month or three months. Uh, depends on the reputation. So usually, uh, people who, uh, who have bad reputation, uh, you'll know, you, you'll find out from the previous suppliers. Um, I'm not gonna name names, ah, uh, but in general, the uh, BSP has a good uh, good reputation for being a good paymaster. Uh, and uh, another uh, advantage is you don't have a lot of competition. As mentioned, BSP, ah, uh, they don't have a lot of uh, su suppliers uh, that applies because I think most people don't know, or pe most people don't think that they can apply for it. So there's not a lot of competition. So if you can apply, if you're eligible, do so. Eh? Look look it up, uh, find out if there's any business opportunities there. Uh, disadvantages, uh, you need to know the right people. Uh, so networking would be advantages uh, if, you know, sometimes uh, if you know people in, in there, then they can uh, update you when there's something new. Uh, of course, be, ha be careful uh, or else there'll, uh, there'll be issues of uh, business integrity or conflict of interest. Huh? As long as you're not too close to it, you, you should be fine. And unfortunately, requirements may be high, depending on the corporations. But in terms of BSP, the requirements, as, as I mentioned, uh, you, uh, in, in some cases, in most cases, you need to be a Sindran Bahat. Uh, and then uh, not to mention that you might have to follow a few of the requirements as well. Uh, something, uh, there's something in BSP or in oil and gas industry called green banding. So you have to uh, fulfill certain requirements such as HSE or uh, HSE or health, safety, security, and environment. Uh, once you fulfill those, then you are eligible to apply for the tenders or can get awarded uh, those tenders. So that's uh, business to business. Now look at business to government. Okay, there's a lot of government ministries. A lot of them have tenders. Again, uh, most tenders are uh, in, in general to outsource, uh, to do stuff, to do activities that are not their main uh, main aim and the main processes or their main operations. Uh, so uh, looking in government, they also have that as well. So you can look into all the ministries. On in general, their individual websites might have specific tenders. Uh, and the uh, tenders in general, uh, as you see on the bottom left, is the Pelita Brunei. So you can look into Pelita Brunei, uh, .jov .bn, or you can look for Brunei government tenders. You, it will lead you to Pelita Brunei uh, website. So you can look at the most current uh, government tenders or uh, uh, projects under government that they might need uh, pri uh, private partnerships. Uh, and then there's also uh, you can see a lot, of, uh, a lot of GLCs, government linked companies. So those are basically private public partnerships. Uh, so a lot of private companies partner up with uh, the government to create a project. Uh, uh, you can see also in farming, you can see also in the oil and gas industry and so on. And then uh, there's supplies. Uh, so supplies to government, again, like stationaries, events management. Sometimes they do, they try to do this internally. Uh, they'll probably ask for consultation rather than an events management company. Then there's food and beverages uh, and catering. Uh, previously in government, uh, before COVID, before the budget restrictions, uh, every meeting has food and beverages. Uh, so there's a huge opportunity for catering. Uh, but nowadays it's usually for big events. Uh, good example is right now, National Day. Uh, so uh, during National Day, if, uh, you, you just you usually see, just see the people lining up, walking around. But there's also uh, uh, food and beverages provided for those people who are involved in the events. Uh, so those are there are also opportunities there. Uh, media and coverage uh, usually. Again, related with events management, uh, usually they have their own internal uh, team, but if they don't, then they'll probably uh, hire, uh, hire outsiders. Uh, I think uh, there was a Lava member, uh, what was his name? Ambuyard. Uh, so he used to uh, create cartoons as well. And I think AITI often uh, 
uh, often hired him to do cartoons. I think if you see the cartoons that are on uh, TV or animation, sometimes they are outsourced. Uh, they might have an internal team that does it uh, as well as well, but uh, in most cases I've seen is they actually outsource it. Uh, research and studies suspension uh, corporates really uh, well small companies in Brunei really do this but in government they usually outsource the research uh, so that uh, sometimes involve consultancy and training as well uh, so training i've actually done a few training tender contracts when i was had my computer school i was outsourced uh, to uh, well, subcon subcon to another company Uh, and they were looking for uh, well ICT trainers who can converse in Malay. So uh, I was uh, p- people were looking for me. Uh, so I-, I filled in that gap. And then of course there's infrastructure and construction. Usually when the government, the Brunei government, has a lot of budget, then they'll be looking to this uh, either to expand the building uh, or to add another new building. Of course in in most cases. Uh, you'll be looking into maintenance nowadays. Uh, it's it's to save money, uh, uh, but we still have to maintain a few buildings. We can't just you know leave the buildings as, as it is. Uh, you can also see like stadium is currently being uh, maintained, uh, but uh, unfortunately we, uh, with COVID, a lot of the processes are slowed down. I uh, think projects that were supposed to finish uh, like late last year or middle of last year has been extended. Uh, so. Uh, it's it's a bit slowed down there. Uh, that includes uh, Roda, the JKR. Even though it's government JKR, but you might notice that the the labor workers are foreign. Uh, so that uh, most likely means they are private companies that have contracted to fix the roads. Okay, uh, and uh, this is an example of the. Uh, the government tenders again. This is a recent one I uh, plucked from the Prita Brunei. Uh, so in this example is the food, uh, food uh, supplying uh, to schools, uh, and uh, yeah, in this case breakfast. So uh, it's quite common for Ministry of Education to tender out uh, supplying food to schools. Uh, even the canteens, they have a limited uh, cycle. So probably every one, two, three years, they'll be tendering out for new suppliers. So there's a huge opportunity there. Uh, unfortunately, because this is publicly published in Plita Brunei, you'll have a lot of um, a lot of uh, competition as well. Okay, uh, so the advantages is of course people will see it as easy money. Uh, the government will pay, but uh, and they don't pay. They don't usually pay on time. Again, government is trying to improve. Ah. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the disadvantages is uh, networking might be advantages, but as mentioned with the BSP stuff as well, uh, it might be investigated as conflict of interest. So be careful with using your contacts. Okay, as long as you're not taking advantage of people of your contacts in an unfair way, you should be fine. Uh, but just be wary of that. And as mentioned, there's a lot of competition because it's usually published uh, in the Plita Brunei. There's a lot of competition, uh, and I think this is where a lot of people complain, where they see the contractors that get the contracts are usually foreigners, uh, and usually because a lot of high competition, people usually go for the lowest price, not necessarily the best price. Okay, uh, although in general the 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 statement is usually they don't necessarily go for the cheapest. Tenders, uh, but if everything looks the same, if everything has the same uh, supplier, everything has the same uh, specification, then of course the cheapest one will win. Uh, in in most cases, if it's the same. But if you can provide something special, something different, then uh, it's uh, you know it, it's uh, advantages. But in most of these tenders, it's going to be something specific. So it's it's a matter of mostly looking for the lowest amount. Okay, <clears throat> so that's business to government, and um, basically that's uh, that's it on the business opportunities. So if you want to find out more, or if you want to discuss more with other people, uh, you can also join our business plan series. Uh, we cover the market research on already on the first day uh, in the afternoon. Uh, basically, the second part of the business plan series, we talk about market research. What are the uh, what is the market telling you? What what's the uh, opportunity there? And then we also have master classes again, half day workshops. We do have a specific on market research in itself. And then there's something called bias persona, looking at your ideal customer target, 
Uh, and then the, the, the business model canvas, again, looking at the opportunities based on your business ideas, uh, along with uh, ideation using lean canvas. Okay, uh, so that's basically it. So just sharing with you that, um, again, in terms of if you're wanting, wanting to run a business, it's recommended to keep track of your finances and you can easily do that using the iCashflow.bn. So this is one of the apps that we develop uh, uh, for SMEs. Uh, so we would like uh, to help a lot of people uh, to manage their finances because I would say majority of most business failures is the failure to manage their finances. So at the least that you could do is track your finances to see where your money is going, uh, uh, where it's coming from and then see whether you're managing it properly. Uh, so if you want to uh, download from either Google Play or App Store, uh, you can do so by scanning the iCashflow.bn from, uh, from this QR code. Huh? So I'm just going to give a few seconds for anyone who hasn't downloaded the app yet okay, to download. Huh? Okay. Uh, so again, uh, if you haven't, please download the iCashflow.bn. Maybe it'll help you. If it's not for business, you can also use it for personal uh, uses. Huh? Uh, and then we also have the alumni profiles ebook. Okay, so scan to download the ebook. Uh, so you can find out what uh, who are the alumni uh, that has uh, been successful in LiveWire uh, in the last twenty years. Um, not it's not everyone here. Uh, we've d done another one like ten years ago. Some of them survive still and still managed to go into this ebook. Uh, so there are new and older uh, business owners and uh, managers. Huh? <clears throat> So just if you want to find out more. Uh, so if you want to find out more about LiveWire, uh, find out more about the workshops, there are also contents in here. So you can find out more. Huh? Uh, and uh, right now, of course, with the whole uh, COVID third wave, uh, our office is not yet uh, it's not fully operational, so you can't just drop by. But if once the third wave is over, the Omicron wave is over, you can uh, drop by and meet with us. But otherwise, to, again, to find out more information, j just check our website, livewaybrunei.com. But for updates, if you have any changes or any new workshops or any other events, or when you want to be reminded of the next uh, live stream, uh, just check our IG, uh, Liveway Brunei. Okay, uh, so just, uh, just reminding you, uh, so that's basically it for this session for this uh, this month. Uh, but in March, we'll be looking at the legal considerations in doing business in Brunei. Uh, in general, it's mostly copy pasting from business.gov.bn. Uh, but if you want it to be summarized and to be explained further, you can look up uh, the live stream then and uh, maybe even ask your questions. Okay, uh, so any questions? I'm just checking the chat. Okay, checking chat. La la la. Okay, so far I don't see any questions, but I'm going to give at least one minute because sometimes the, the network is delayed up to one minute. Okay, just checking chat. Okay, again, uh, apologies for the technical issues earlier. Uh, so thankfully that was resolved. Um, basically my computer was overheating. Biasa di office sajuk banar. Uh, tapi masa tu, masa di rumah ni, uh, some of you know that I don't usually turn on my aircon. So the aircon wasn't cold enough yet to cool down the laptop. So yeah, th thankfully we've, we've resolved that. Uh, and also thank you for uh, joining us uh, until uh, the end. And I would like not to forget to say happy national day. So uh, please celebrate uh, safely and responsibly. Uh, st stay safe. Huh? Uh, so I'm just looking at chat if anyone have any questions. Okay, can't wait for the next one. Okay. Of course, if you have any questions or comments or if you want to have any recommendations of what topics, uh, maybe uh, this is comprehensive enough uh, or at least you might uh, suggest something that I cover in those topics as well. Okay, just looking, double checking my dates. Yeah, I think this, yeah, that's comprehensive enough. But again, I might miss something. 
Okay, so far no questions and time now is oh, 3.32, so a bit, uh, uh, but with the, even with the technical issues, we're on time. So I was just planning a one hour uh, talk. Okay, so... <clears throat>